everybody at the top table here, just along the officers' table, uh, introduce themselves, please. Liz, can I start with you? Thank you, Chairman. I'm Liz Javorska for Committee Services. Hello, my name is Major Nash, uh, Solicitor of Legal Services. Thank you, Chairman. I'm Dale Barker. I'm a team leader. My role is as, is as an impartial advisor to the committee and to help answer any questions that arise. I'm bound by the Code of Professional Conduct of the Royal Town Planning Institute. And during the meeting, I may be asked to comment on points raised, seek clarifications, and advise on planning practice to ensure that the decision made by committee is sound. Committee members are not bound by the case officer's recommendation or by any oral advice. Thank you. Alice Cosnett, Senior Planner. Mark Weller, Lambert Smithampton, the Council's Viability Consultant. Eddie Wrench, Senior Town Planner. James Hodgkins, Planner. David Jeffrey, Senior Town Planner. Perfect. Thank you very much, everybody. Right. So, uh, unless I'm getting out of sync, I think we go now to item one. Apologies for absence, please. None received, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I know that we're waiting for Councillor Parry. Uh, I'm sure we've all been stru stuck in traffic over the last few days around Stratford. And I know there's an accident tonight as well, so she'll join us when she can. Um, disclosure of interests, please, from members. Any at all? Yes, Councillor Crump. First application, I'll be ward member and I'll be the drawing from committee as usual. Thank you. Okay. If there are no other disclosures, that's fine. So. Penny Compton letter. Just draw your attention to that. Did, I'm assuming that all committee members received a letter from the Fenny, Fenny Compton Parish Council, I think, is it? No, Sorry. Coralist planning, uh, planning, uh, planning agent for the applicant. Did anybody receive that, or did nobody receive it? This is concerning the Lancaster. Should we leave that one? It's the Lancaster item, item 7. Okay, so it's for item 7. It was emailed to everybody, Chair. All right. Well, obviously, you've not. Don't worry. We'll leave it. Thank you. That's fine. Uh, next item, item three, minutes of the meeting held on 13th of December. Do I have your... Thank you very much. I'll sign those at the end. Right, before we jump into the uh, agenda proper, I'm just going to make a few very quick changes if the committee are okay uh, with that. I'd like to move item five up to the next item, and then we'll deal with item seven shortly after that. Then we'll follow the normal numerical running order, if that's okay with everybody the reasons for which will become obvious as we move along. So, if that's okay, we go then to our first application tonight, and this is item 5, found on page 33 of your agendas, and this is application reference 17 slash 00178 slash S106A, so the Harbury Cement Works, Bishop Sitchington, is for the variation of a 106 agreement, section 106 agreement. Presenting officer Alice Colsnett, can I ask you to update us, Alice? Thank you, Chairman. As per the update sheet, since the agenda went to print, uh, the applicant has proposed an additional 11 affordable units in the form of discount to market price of 30% or the equivalent off-site financial contribution. On this basis, Councillor Kettle has confirmed his agreement for the deed of variation to be approved under delegated powers. And as a result, there is an updated recommendation that the planning manager be authorised to determine the deed of variation under delegated powers. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Alice. Can I just confirm very quickly that the only reason this would have come to committee is not through scale of development, it's only as a result of it being a request from the ward member? Yes, that's correct. Thank you. Right, if the committee are content with that, I'm happy to uh, propose that we delegate that decision to officers, seconded by Councillor Barnes. If you're all content to go to vote on that. Thank you. Can uh, I, I assume the speakers know, do they? Yes, they do. Yeah. They were told in advance. So, therefore, the committee resolves to delegate uh, application reference 17 slash 00178 slash S106A for decision by officers. We can then move to item 7 on your agenda as well, which is found on page 57. This is application reference then 17 slash 02362 slash FUL. This is for the land next to the Lankert Mill Lane, Fenny Compton, and it's the direction of four residential dwellings and associated infrastructure. Uh, presenting officer is James Hodgkins. Um, I believe we're going to be looking at deferring this as well. Can I ask Dale to give me a little bit of an update, please? That's right. Thank you, Chair. Uh, again, it's, it's covered in the uh, update sheet that's in front of your members. Uh, since the report was published, 
we've received some advice from, from our policy team indicating that we need to do further research into the policy issues surrounding this application uh, to establish whether or not the principle of development is acceptable. Uh, we're therefore requesting members to defer the application to allow us to do that work. And in the event that the principle of objection is overcome, the application can be decided under delegated powers uh, as both the town parish council and the local member are supporting the application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Dale. That seems very sensible. Um, I'm, ha again, happy to propose that we defer that. Do I have a seconder for that? Yeah. Councillor Mills, just beat you to it. Um, if anyone's happy to vote on that as well. All those in favour of deferment? Thank you. Unanimous, Thanks. So, therefore, the committee uh, resolves to defer application reference 17 slash 02362 F slash FUL. Don't get too excited, committee. That's, that's, they're the quick ones out that's the way. That's the easy bit. Right. Okay, let's <laughs> resume the normal numerical running order. Okay, so that means, let me just tear those off so I don't keep going back to them. Right, lovely. So let's go back to item four. This is found on page seven of your agendas tonight. Uh, and is application reference 17 slash 01930 slash REM is for the land between Daventry Road and Welsh Road East. It's for a reserve matters application for 535 dwellings pursuant to an approval previously. I'm not going to read out all the numbers, including matters relating to the layout, landscaping, appearance and scale um, reserved by condition and including an internal road network, housing, layout and types, green infrastructure, two child, children's play areas, indoor sports pitches, sorry, outdoor sports pitches together with parking, landscaping and open space. Presenting officer, David Jeffrey. David, over to you. Thank you ever so much, Chair. Um, yes, as you concisely said in a nutshell this is application 1701930 REM which is the phase two reserve matters detailed for the 535 dwellings um, including landscape and layout so on for uh, land between Daventry Road and Welsh Road East. The application site sits to the east of Southam between Daventry Road and Welsh Road East and east of the Flying Fields housing estate the proposal delivers on SOU3, the core strategy policy housing allocation. The application site boundary is shown here. Um, members will note the properties on um, Rainsbrook Close and Napton Rise, which are the closest dwellings on Fl the Flying Fields estate. Um, public footpath also shown running across the side of the site. Listed buildings are shown in red and the town centre conservation area is picked out in pink. This slide shows an aerial view of the application site which comprises a single large agricultural field bounded by native hedges. Um, adjacent to Welsh Road East is a small area of hard standing and an agricultural building. Um, to the south this is in Site Park. There are some live work units there and a distribution and storage uh, building. To the um, uh, this east and the um, north, we have open countryside. This is the view from the hard standing area within the site. It shows the open fields and the flat nature of the site. Turning towards the agricultural buildings, and towards Insight uh, Park, the live work units. This view from within the site shows the western boundary um, with the Flying Fields estate seen. Looking towards uh, Napton Rise there, and further around towards Rainsbrook Close and towards land associated with the bailiff's house. This view is from within the site near to Daventry Road, looking across the site towards the bailiff's house, which can be picked out there, and towards Insight Park and the wider site, and the boundary hedge um, with Daventry Road. This slide shows the parameters plan which accompanied the outline application and which, was, um, and which the outline approval conditioned development should be in general accordance with. 
This slide shows the phase one approved plan. That was approved under delegated powers with the consent of the parish council and the ward member, excuse me, town council, I should say. <coughs> it details the layout of a significant <laughs> element of the primary road and the frontage Davanchy Road, including landscape and drainage and temporary accesses um, for sales and construction. Moving now to this application, this proposal fleshes out the scheme um, a great deal. It shows the whole of the site here. Um, the layout shows 535 dwellings across the site, including open spaces, play areas, and an appropriate street hierarchy. Uh, the scheme achieves um, 34 dwellings per hectare, and 187 of those dwellings are affordable um, in a mix of tenures. Um, amendments to the scheme during the lifetime of the application have created a more balanced open space provision, as referred to in the uh, agenda report, uh, reflecting the latest advice of policy. A landscape buffer is incorporated here um, into the gardens of future residents um, between the proposed development and the flying fields um, estate. This detail was agreed at the request of the Parish Council, who initially objected to this, the proposal. Details of um, a shop, which will eventually be provided in this location, and the uh, community hall sports pavilion, which will be eventually provided in this location, um, will follow as required by the Section 106. The scheme incorporates four character area types um, with a central um, line, tree-lined primary route through the site from Daventry Road to Welsh Road East as a key feature. Secondary streets are also shown, Muse Courtyard dwellings and dwellings approaching the um, open space frontage designed particularly for that rural edge. The properties are a mix of bungalows in, sorry, a mix of properties in bungalows, two storeys and two and a half storey dwellings. This slide shows a visualisation of views from within the public realm looking west towards the development. The properties are proposed in a mix of red brick, grey and red tiles and render. They include bay windows, coins, dormers as architectural features. This, shli this slide shows views of the entrance to the development from Welsh Road East. And this slide shows a view from Daventry Road looking into the scheme across the triangular plot reserved for a retail unit. Returning to the overall plan, it's notable how significantly the proposal adheres to the outline plan considered at committee. Landscaping to the east along Daventry Road has been significantly strengthened through amendments and drainage and electricity and gas compounds have been sensitively cited. That concludes the presentation. There are a number of updates on the update sheet, including representations from the Town Council and two further recommended conditions relating to the landscape boundary with flying fields. Um, and another condition proposed to secure um, an approved CCTV scheme at Pound Way. Subject to those additional conditions, officers consider the recommendation within the committee report to be um, robust. Therefore, Chair, the recommendation is that the planning manager be authorised to grant approval to the reserve matters details subject to the conditions and notes within the report and the additional conditions detailed within the update sheet. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, David. Excellent. Uh, let's go to our first speaker. Now, previously we had the town, uh, sorry, the town council had registered to speak. They've now withdrawn their uh, wish to speak. So we go to our objectors. We start, Mr. Ian Beattie, please. If you'd like to come on up and take a seat at the table there. Yes, is uh, Ms. Cripps here yet? Is it? I've got. Oh, is she? So you're deputising. All right. Um, if yes, if you both want to take a seat. Now, you have, you've got three minutes between you. Have you worked out how you want to divide this up yeah. equally? Yes. All right. I'll try to give you a, a ten-second warning before the halfway point, if you like. All right. In that case, if I can actually stay seated for any questions at the end, and as I say, I'll give you a warning towards the halfway point as well. All right. If you, that's it. 
Brilliant. Okay. Gents, over to you. Okay. I'm Ian Beatty of Naps and Rise, and this is uh, uh, Gary Cripps of um, Rainsbrook Close. Um, we're here to share the allotted time. The issue you wanted to cover is actually in your agenda on page 22, and David, I know, made reference to it just now. It's the buffer between the um, new development and uh, Naps and Rise Transport. Um, we, re we refer to the buffer between the existing houses and the development on the western boundary. This buffer was proposed from the outset and was agreed in the outline planning application that achieved approval in April of 2016. It's been a matter of a, uh, some discussion but always remained until a recent amendment to this planning application removed it and awarded it to the, um, in addition to the long gardens of the houses of the new development. Awarding the buffer to the new houses was rejected, however, in a pre-planning meeting in April of last year and was deemed too difficult to manage and is covered in the design and access statement that was produced in support of the application. The applicant has stated to us in writing that the current metre high hedgerow that separates the existing houses from the development will be at the bottom of the gardens of the new houses. This hedgerow was a suitable boundary to the agricultural field that existed but is totally unsuitable as a boundary between houses. It will mean a total loss of privacy between the two sets of houses, a security issue between the properties, and raises the issue regarding the maintenance of this well-established hedgerow, and will inevitably result in disputes between the two sets of houses. We believe a far better solution would be either retain the buffer, as was originally designed, with significant security at each end, or put a fence at the bottom of the long gardens of the new houses and award the buffer to the existing houses um, that abut the development. We request the committee to give this serious issue their further consideration. Thank you very much for your time. Okay. Mr. B. Mr. Beatty, well, you have my names. Uh, Mr. Beatty, you have one minute remaining. I'm just wondering if your wife's arrived. And no, yes. Yes. there is. This is Mrs. 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 Cripps. Sorry, not Mrs. Beatty. <laughs> Mrs. Cripps. Apologies. I'm very sorry. <laughs> uh, are you still content to carry on? Yeah. Do you want to... Oh, she's here. Okay, yeah. go for it. In that case, you've, ju you've got just over a minute left. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, Joe. No, no, that's What am I doing? Oh, I understand the traffic's pretty horrendous tonight. So I've introduced you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right. Go. Okay, I'm afraid, Ms. Cripps, you've only got uh, just over a minute left. Uh, apologies for that. Over to you. Right. Since the houses were built 21 years ago, previous and current residents have maintained the boundary hedge on both sides religiously. Some of these hedges are in excess of 90 foot long, which will result in some of the existing residents sharing their hedge with approximately two and a half gardens of the new houses. Not only could this mean that the hedge could potentially be at least three different heights, but also, more worryingly, the maintenance of the hedge could become an unkept wilderness with no single point of person or contact in a dispute. What we propose today is a solution that will keep the peace with both existing and future residents, so we'd ask you to please consider either retaining the buffer, which it can also be called a gap, at the, edge, uh, at the end of the gardens, with the significant, significant security at each end, as agreed on the previous plans, or award the buffer to the existing residents that are adjacent to the new development, that's the existing um, houses, placing necessary restrictions and regulations to the maintenance of the buffer or the gap. We request that you give this statement serious consideration as this will affect not only the future residents of this development but also the existing residents, the long-standing residents of Rainsbrook Close and Napton Rise. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Brilliant. Any questions from the committee, please? Yes, Councillor Brain. No, it doesn't matter who answers it, really. In your written submission, you talk about um, football pitches and... Uh, uh, sports pitches. Are you looking at... Actually, uh, Councillor Brain, I think that may have been the parish council that no, have made that point. Oh, sorry. Uh, that's excuse right. me. No, it's okay. Thank you. No. Any so, further so, questions? Yes. Councillor Barnes? Could I, could I ask exactly where we are on the map that we've got? Where we are? I mean, where the, the curse is moving up and down. That's what we're that, talking about. That. So we're referring to that area. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's so we could have two or three houses. Yes, um, Councillor Fielding. What sort of fence are you thinking of between them, if you were to be 
in charge of it? What sort of fence? Not a fence, it's a hedge. It's a hawthorn hedge. So, so you have would have a hedge on your side, which is your responsibility? Both sides has been for 21 years, but now they're talking about having their gardens extended and the new owners would, would deal with the other side of the hedge. And it's a metre high hedge, so they'll be able to just look into one another's gardens. What we're proposing is that the long gardens that were originally specified in the plan be fenced and the, the land either be retained as a buffer like it was before, blocked off at each end to aid security, or give that buffer to the existing houses and they can then maintain that, um, that area. As, as required, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Can yes. I, what you're saying you, you want it to remain as a buffer for, for you to maintain, what you, so you're wanting to put a hedge there rather than... No, a, no, no there no, is the a hedge. hedge is already There's there. a hawthorn that's yeah. been there for 21 yeah, you've got years. You've to manage the hedge from both sides. So oh, right. uh, you are, Therefore, you're wanting access into the gardens of yes. the house on the other side. Houses on the other the side. houses already have access, in effect, through... Could I come in, if that's okay? I think, if Councillor Fielding, if you look at the, the screen now, that, that, that green hedging through the middle is the, is the buffer that's being proposed. It's already there as well. Am I correct in saying that, David? Yes. yes. David, could I ask you just quickly to come in and just clarify this point? I know we're a bit out of sync, but let's just do that now. Yeah, absolutely, Chair. Um, the hedge does exist at the moment in part. Um, the photo earlier in my presentation... Uh, showed that there are areas uh, towards Rainsbrook Close down here where it would need to be improved. I have included in the update sheet a condition which would intend to specifically um, achieve details of that and triggers for that so that it could be delivered um, promptly and maintained for the duration. Okay. Proposal is sorry. The the proposal is to um, improve the hedge planting um, on the immediate boundary, and then there are um, heavy uh, heavy stock trees to be planted towards the rear of the gardens, um, and they would be within the garden areas of these would properties. That affect, sorry, could I ask the? the I can't, I can't, I can't ask this is they've stuffed us. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. right. If there are no further questions. Oh, thank you very much. has managed to join us. Excellent. But of course, you can't take part in the, any part of the discussion tonight for this application or vote, as long as you're aware of that. Okay, uh, if I could go to our next speakers then. These are the uh, Catherine Young, please, and then I've got a list of other people. If you all want to come up, that's fine. And take a seat. But I know... Uh, Catherine, you're going to be the one doing the speaking. Okay. <laughs> I think everybody else is just coming up for possible questions. Here you go. Thank you. Uh, you have six minutes between you, um, and um, if you'd remain seated for any questions at the end, that'd be fantastic. And I'll give you a warning at 10 seconds before the end of your allotted time, if that's okay. In that case, over to you. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, Chair and members of the committee. My name is Catherine Young and I represent the applicant, Taylor Wimpy Midlands. You have before you a reserve matters planning application for 535 new homes at Sardom. It is recognised in planning policy that Sardom is a sustainable location for housing growth. The site benefits from an allocation for residential development through policy SOU3 of the adopted Stratford and Avon core strategy. Outline planning permission was granted in December 2016. This application represents phase two of the development with phase one relating to initial road and sewer infrastructure having been approved by delegated authority on the 1st of December 2017. The site is identified in the council's housing trajectory and is a key contributor to the council's housing land supply. The application is recommended for approval by your officers a, a proposal that reflects the culmination of proactive and cooperative discussions between Taylor Wimpey, your officers and other key stakeholders. Taylor Wimpey has met with Southern Town Council on a number of occasions during the evolution of the proposals and has also provided personalised responses to concerns raised by local residents and held meetings with residents neighbouring the western and southern site boundaries. 
We have worked with your officer team to develop a scheme in order to deliver a high quality, sustainable development which will provide a real social, economic and environmental benefits for the local community. The proposals have been revised to directly address concerns initially raised by local residents. This includes amendments to the landscape buffer on the western site boundary, which is now included within the gardens of the proposed dwellings to ensure that any potential for antisocial behaviour is removed. This was discussed and agreed with the Town Council as the most appropriate design. Taylor Wimpy is keen to ensure or keen to continue to build on existing relationships formed with the Town Council and local residents and is committed to establishing a stakeholder group in order that all interested parties can remain up to date regarding the progress of the site through the entire build period. All technical matters have been fully resolved and your officer has confirmed in their report that the proposals represent a high quality design and that the range of house types and materials proposed ensures visual interest. Taylor Wimpy has worked closely with the local highway authority who have confirmed they have no objection to the proposals. Your officer has confirmed the proposal achieves the government's aims set out in the MPPF of promoting mixed communities and response to material considerations specific to Southam. Given the clear benefits of the proposals and the officer's clear recommendation, we respectfully request that planning permission is granted for the proposed development. And finally, thank you for the opportunity to address committee this evening. Thank you very much. Any questions, please? Yes, Councillor Fielding. The, the parking and garage, is that being taken into account or am I being a bit premature on that? No, um, parking and, and garaging has been taken into account and it is shown on the... Is, does that meet the, the Council's um, new regulations with regards to parking? The, the one, can I ask you to go into that? The, what, which part of it? The parking guidelines uh, approved by Cabinet the other day uh, are at the moment uh, limited weight. Uh, there's a lot of consultation to go through first, uh, Councillor. So at the moment, the members should really consider that as limited weight at the moment. Okay. Councillor Mills. I thought you indicated the question now. Councillor O'Donnell. Sorry. I've got you. Good evening. Um, just a quick question regarding the boundary, because obviously that's what seems to be causing um, some concern to the current residents. How will the boundary being part of the new properties gardens potentially reduce antisocial behaviour? Is that, I believe that's what you were saying. Yes, so the, the, um, the proposed buffer will now form part of the um, garden for the proposed dwellings. Um, through initial discussions, the, the first layout showed um, a buffer not to be in the garden, neither the existing properties on Napton Rise um, or Rangebrook Close or the proposed properties. Concerns were raised then that due to the sort of wide nature of this open piece of land, or, although it was proposed to be secured, there was concern that people could still access that area. It will now be within the private property of the proposed dwellings. Okay. Councillor Barnes. Yes, you heard what the resident said, but it does appear that you've had quite a lot of meetings with the parish council and residents previously. Is this new that's come up, or can you address what they're concerned or not? It, it's not new, no, this, is, this has been part of the discussion through the determination of the application and, and our client has met with those residents and the town council um, and through those discussions it was decided this was the most appropriate um, and suitable uh, design for this part of the scheme. All right. Well, if there are no further questions, thank you very much all of you. And we can move to our next, thank you. <laughs> Okay, um, and we can go to uh, points. No, we're not going to go to our ward member, Councillor Crump. So thank you. You can all return. <laughs> thank you. Welcome, Councillor Crump. So you know the routine. You've got five minutes. Over to you. All right. Um, the 535 houses were our key part of the five-year housing land supply and the core strategy. And although when this site was originally first put in the core strategy, I objected strongly, and when we actually voted on the core strategy, I was one of nine who actually voted against this proposal. Because 
um, I thought it was too many houses for Southam. Bearing in mind we were having, including the 535 of them, uh, 1100 houses. But I now accept it is, is taking place, but it's important to make sure we get the infrastructure right as well as the housing mix for local Southam needs. Um, it is now pleasing to hear that uh, the developers found a social housing provider to take this scheme on board and work has been undertaken to ensure there is the correct mix of houses that meet Southam's local needs. Um, as you've probably heard, much work has been undertaken to iron out many of the issues that have arisen and they have been resolved uh, as you can see from the update sheet and also from the withdrawal of the objection from the Town Council. There are still one or two issues there um, that I'll talk about in a minute, but the one real issue that you've already heard about is regarding the, the hedge and the boundary, uh, and obviously the neighbours have got this concern. Um, I think, you know, I'm, I can see both sides of the argument on this one. Uh, and I think I will leave it to the committee to make a, the appropriate decision on this matter because um, I can see from the neighbours' point of view but I can also see the issue regarding antisocial behaviour. So I think it's probably fairer that you as outside, uh, uh, away from the argument, away from the area, can make a decision that can be seen as fair and neutral. The Town Council obviously has made its concerns known about the vehicle tracking uh, and regarding the... the uh, the HGVs and uh, delivery vehicles and refuse vehicles around the, the tight spaces. Um, and some of those I don't necessarily disagree with, but the County, County Council, again, have said this is not unusual. Uh, and again, it's been mentioned in the update sheet that um, they are willing to accept, uh, accept the advice from the Highways Authority. One positive uh, point to note is that the portfolio holder has agreed that there will be a liaison group between uh, the district councillors for Southam, the developer, the contractor, uh, social housing provider, potentially local residents and SCC officers. So we can hopefully improve communications and quickly iron out any issues that arise. Um, and again, the developer has listened to my, one of my major concerns regarding the underpass which is going to be one of the key routes into the town, um, which can sort of from extreme fl flooding at times, so you can actually, it goes right up to the ceiling. Um, it's also been antisocial behaviour in that area, and the lighting and flooding and um, CCTV issues have all been uh, mentioned in the update sheet. So again, that's a positive uh, outcome. So apart from the hedgerow issue, which I remain neutral on, I now support the pro proposal and hope the developer can have a long-term and positive relationship with the town. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Any questions for the ward member? Councillor Barnes. At the end, you said you fully support the application except the hedgerow. Yeah. I'm sorry, I, in my, my speech, I, I, I can see both sides to it. Um, and... Obviously, I'm on the town council as well, but I, I do stand apart from that part of the, for the meeting. And I've been um, contacted by, by neighbours to, to the site, um, who obviously I've objected. And then I've also been contacted by other neighbours who, who think it's a good idea. So, to be fair to both my uh, both sets of constituents, I, I feel it's, it's best for you to make this decision. Yeah, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but you did say it and it yeah. improved the situation there. Thank you, Councillor Barnes. I'll remember that for future reference. <laughs> Any uh, further questions? Councillor O'Donnell. Good evening. Um, can I check, has the subject of broadband been addressed yet, given there's going to be 535 houses and the issues we all face are different wards with broadband issues? Um, I could touch that with my... County Councillor hat on, and there is um, going to be some money put aside for fibre optic um, because the, we, Southam's not too bad from a broadband point of view, but as you get to, towards Napton, and this is on the Napton Road, um, it does start to taper off, get, and when you get to Napton, it's very poor. So, um, yes, it is on one of my uh, priorities to make sure it does happen, but I can't see that being a particular uh, issue for that site. 
So if there are no further questions, Councillor Crump, thank you very much. Right, should we go to points of clarification? Does anybody here have any questions that they'd like to ask the officers? Councillor Fielding. I am concerned about the legal problems because boundary disputes is probably one of the most aggravating things one has to deal with. And I would make, like to make sure that the officers in, in what they're, sorry, I'm probably going into um, debate rather than into a question here, but make sure that the officers do create a proper um, boundary that can be maintained both sides rather than just have the buffer because the buffer will create antisocial problems. And I think that, you know, I'd like to hear what the officers are going to deal with on that one. Perhaps we could just confirm again, just to clarify, just where the, what the situation is with that buffer one more time for us. Yeah, so the, the situation with the buffer is that it would be part of the garden of the properties um, within the development site. There is an existing hedge and that would be improved, but in terms of the size of these gardens, they are very substantial now that they've incorporated that area of land. So um, I think on average you would be looking at around an 18 metre um, area between the rear of those elevations and the boundary. So a portion of that in between the garden and the hedge would be planted with um, a stock of trees and native shrubs. Um, we, I've proposed in the update sheet that that would be secure by condition um, and that would be uh, a condition which would see replanting of any um, unsuccessful um, plants there for the period of the development uh, up to five years. Um, so we would expect that to be well established uh, by the time Taylor Wimpy leave the site. Um, I think could I just seek one well, well, Whose responsibility is it to maintain the buffer? They, they would be within those garden areas, so they would be the, the owners of those properties would be responsible for the maintenance of, of the buffer um, once they had taken ownership. Would they be in any way compelled to maintain the buffer? We would have a condition that could be enforced against those um, future owners if they were to remove substantial elements of it. Is it still on the buffer question, Councillor Fielding? Go on. The, the curse of hedges is that it needs to be clipped from both sides, so you're going to have to have some sort of right of access from the um, who, wherever that hedge is to get round to the other side to, to deal with it. I, I'm not convinced that's really a planning matter as much as it is as a property matter, really, and that will have to come later. Um, I've got Councillor um, Barnes next, then Councillor O'Donnell. Yes, on the same thing, I appreciate the hedge. I had, did have go and have a look and it is being maintained by the houses on the one side. It looks to me, and if I'm correct, is that the builders are going to grass it down and put all the trees in and then leave it to the occupants to look after it. Is that instead of the company doing it? Uh, in, in essence, once they had planted it and sold the properties, that would be it, yes, from Taylor Wimpy, it would be the owners. It, it wouldn't necessarily go to a company. The intention here is that it would be um, the town council be offered f the open space first, um, and it was a response to their objection oh, right, that so these amendments were that would undertaken. Be that with the liaison committee, then. They're, they're fine. In, yes, it would. Yeah. Right, Councillor O'Donnell. Thank you. Um, can I ask? So, with with the hedgerow and the, and the buffer, with the existing developments and properties, does that buffer? Is that at the end of their gardens? So will this have, if, if the hedges aren't maintained effectively, will that have an impact on their view and what they're seeing from their gardens and will it impact on them? The, the hedge forms the boundary of their garden at the current time um, and that wouldn't change. Go on. Go on, Dale. Thank you, Chairman. I, I wonder if I can put this in context to, to perhaps help members to visualise what's happening here. Um, the proposal is to build a row of new houses next to a boundary. Under normal circumstances, we'd be looking at a row of new houses, a garden, an existing boundary, and then the existing properties. Uh, at an early stage in this application, I'm looking at David to confirm this to me, 
there was a proposal that a buffer be created here in order to provide the existing residents with a higher standard of amenity, a higher standard of privacy than would normally be provided. And the original intention, David, was that that buffer would not belong to either set of householders. <clears throat> the parish council, town council, I apologise, um, were concerned that they would be expected to adopt it, that whoever was responsible for it, it would become a magnet for antisocial behaviour. So negotiations between the negotiations, let me not specify who, negotiations resulted in that changing so that the buffer is owned by a householder, the householders have responsible for, ability for it, and there is no reason to think that that will cause antisocial behaviour. So that's completely addressed the antisocial behaviour issue. There remains the issue of the relationship with the adjoining properties and, and the distance between them. And David has explained that the gardens on average for this property are about, for this, these properties are about 18 metres long, which is about eight metres longer than a garden would normally be. So you have extra long gardens with an area of planting at the bottom, uh, which it is expected that the householders will continue to maintain, and there will be a condition requiring that at least for five years. Thank you. Um, yes, Councillor Valls. Are correct in saying that this has been done because of the town council? And, and, and anti-social Because of consultation, I would have suppose. This, the change has come about through consultation with yes. the Town Council? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. So just going back, um, Dale, thanks for the explanation. Can I just check, why is it limited to just five years that they're expected to maintain the hedges? Um, it's, uh, um, it's a standard time period, five years. Uh, in the past... It? Yeah, it's a standard time, time period. In the past, councils have tried to impose longer maintenance periods, which has not been so supported by inspectors. So the five-year period has now become a standard nationwide. Uh, it would be jolly difficult to try to enforce a condition beyond that. Right. If there are no further points of clarification. Should we go to the debate? So we would like to start. Councillor Brain, then Councillor Barnes. He beat you just. I'll try not to sit on the fence, Chairman. Um, from what I've heard, there's been a lot of negotiations with the town council. The ward member seems to be happy now, and I think we've got a better decision with the, uh, the boundary fence. Uh, it takes away the antisocial behaviour. And I'm happy to move the recommendation on page 28 that we uh, approve the, uh, the recommendation. OK, so we've got a proposal. Does anybody want to jump straight to a seconder? Council well, Barnes. Yes, I'm only too happy to second it. What I'm very pleased about is that there is a liaison committee, which I think is essential, and which does work well. Any problems with hedges and that sort of thing can be addressed, and uh, I'm quite happy to go to the vote. That is a formal seconding of that proposal. Uh, Councillor Fielding, then Councillor O'Donnell. Councillor O'Donnell. Thank you. Just going back to my previous point, when, when does a condition regarding broadband come into play? Because but from recent discussions in, within group, it's been about the fact that we need to really emphasise that broadband is as important to, as a utility to people. And to say this an amount that will be left aside is not specific enough, really, when there's going to be five, over 500 new properties. It's more point of clarification, but could I ask Dale what you think of, of strengthening the the condition on broadband provision. <clears throat> Is there any way that can be done? You'll have guessed from the hesitation, Chair. Mm. I'm struggling with this one. Um, but can, I, can I turn this round on members and ask them what strengthening they think would be helpful, and then I can perhaps give a, a, a planning assessment of whether we can achieve that? Um, I'm not quite clear what members are trying to achieve, I suppose, is the answer I'm giving. O'Donnell? I just feel it's too vague. I mean, where is it stating what's going to happen unless I've missed it regarding the, regarding the broadband? Is it listed there, David? Which point should we be looking at? Where is it? Yeah. 
I have, I have received details with this reserve matters of um, broadband proposals, and they do commit to um, delivering fast fibre broadband to the site. I have discussed that with the applicant, and I have no doubt that they will deliver that. Um, I'm not sure there's a condition on the outline approval at this time that says uh, when that will be triggered. I'd imagine that it's um, upon occupation, effectively. Um, because we've received details relating to that as part of this reserve matters, it would perhaps not be inappropriate to condition those details that have been received um, as part of any approval here. Councillor Fielding. Part of our discussions last night, there was an indication from a fellow councillor who deals very much in the computer world that there, is a, there are other forms coming forward that will improve the broadband facility, wireless, etc. So you know, it may not be that fibre is around at the, or is old hat by the time this is developed. So I think we've got to make sure that speeds are, are maintained, but it um, depends on the technology at the time. Yes. Okay. Uh, is anybody else want to speak in the debate? Well, we have a proposition that has been seconded that we approve the application. Should we go to the vote? All those, please, in favour of approving as stands, please show. Thank you, and that is unanimous. Therefore, the committee resolves to grant application reference 17 slash 01930 slash REM. And we can move to item 6 on tonight's agenda, which is our next application. Okay, next up, we've got item six, and this is found on page 43 of the agendas. And this is application reference 17 slash 01429 slash REM. It's land off the boroughs, New Bold on Stour, and it's reserved matters pursuant to the outline permission uh, previously for the construction of up to 35 dwellings that were granted at appeal. Um, presenting officer Eddie Wrench. Eddie, over to you. Thank you, Chair. The application site is located at the southern edge of the village of Newbold on Stour at the junction of Mill Lane and A3400 Stratford Road, as denoted here by the black dot. Access to the site is from the boroughs to the northwestern edge, which was, which was approved at outline stage. The site here is outlined in red as shown. This is an aerial view of the site showing the surrounding residential development to the northeast and northwest and other agricultural areas surrounding. The site is currently scrubland and trees with some derelict buildings. This is the proposed site plan showing the 35 dwellings which are a combination of 12 affordable units and 23 open market units. As part of the proposal, 82 off-street car parking spaces would be provided, as well as 18 garage spaces. Barring the initial part of the access into the site, the roads and footways within the site would be unadopted and maintained by a management company. This slide shows the proposed site is superimposed onto the aerial view. The existing boundary hedges are all proposed to be retained, thinned and gapped up where necessary. This slide shows two of the proposed street scenes within the development with some of the house types shown. This photo is from the boroughs looking towards the approved access into the site. <coughs> Here is a short video from within the site showing the access uh, to the dwellings. Uh, the existing dwellings along the boroughs and miles meadows in the, in the background here and some of the existing vegetation on the site. Some of the fencing shown was, is a, the low level fencing shown is for ecological purposes which has been agreed with the county council. 
Uh, this next video is, is also taken uh, within the site, further in the southern portion, and it shows the A3400 in the background, just beyond these trees here. Uh, some of the internal trees and scrubland which would be removed to make way for the houses and also some of the derelict buildings. Finally, this photo is looking northwards along Stratford Road with the application site to the right hand side beyond the mature boundary vegetation. There is one update uh, uh, with a representation from WCC Ecology of no objection. Chairman, the recommendation is to grant permission subject to the conditions and notes detailed on pages 51 to 53 of the agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. Okay, our first speaker on this application then is uh, Councillor Paul Clayton from Treddington Parish Council, please. Welcome, Councillor. So uh, you have three minutes. Uh, if you'd remain seated for any questions at the end, and I'll give you a warning at the final 10 seconds, if that's okay. If you'd press the button in the middle as well, that's perfect. Thank you. Over to you. Good evening. Um, to start with, I'd like to bring up the parking issues. Uh, to maximise the density of the housing, development only incorporates single garages per house. Uh, single garages per house with parking for any of the vehicles outside. Due to the layout, this would require vehicles to reverse into neighbours' boundaries to exit or reverse all the way to the road. Due to the nature of the rural lo location, the limited public transport car use is heavy and most residents have owned at least two cars. Some properties don't have parking next to the property, which will lead to vehicles being left on the highway. The revised parking layout has 84 spaces. However, it would appear that six have been given to one house, four to another, and seven of the two three-bedroom homes have been allocated three. Parking spaces, uh, sorry, three parking spaces each. All are behind one another. There is no space for street parking, so the additional 13 spaces should not really count. Putting cars parking behind one another is not really very practical, as it will inev inevitably lead to the need for swap places and certainly one car being left on the road to allow the first to exit. The plan is now answer to the shortage of parking spaces. Um, also, bungalows. There are no bungalows which are needed appear to be included in the housing type. This would mean that the mix is not met by the SHME, which has been a requirement of other recent developments in Newbold. Uh, on road safety, the road safety audit has raised three concerns, including pedestrian safety and restricted visibility for reversing cars, which have not been addressed. On the ecology uh, side of things, there is no detail or mention of the wildlife corridor. One of the conditions of the acceptance put by the planning officers is that the development should take certain steps to preserve any wildlife there. This is also stated in the Ecology Mitigation and Enhancement Scheme report. It would appear from recent observations that they are just ploughing through the land regardless now. The Ecology, Migration and Enhancement Scheme depends on a new wildflower meadow. However, there is no mention of a legal obligation to maintain it and no established time period. Who will be responsible for its maintenance long term? Will there be access for the public? We fear that it will just end up looking like a messy scrub and not uh, compensate for the loss of the wildlife and environment. On the play area, Ten seconds. who is going to maintain it uh, appears to be designed solely for small children um, and th th there's very little green space within the development apart from this. Uh, there's also no verges which does not blend oh, sympathetically with sorry, the Sorry, Councillor Clayton, I'm afraid your time okay, has elapsed. Thank you. Apologies <laughs> for that. I'm nearly sorry. there. <laughs> so, okay, nearly there. <laughs> Any questions, please, for the uh, Parish Council? Councillor Parry? Good evening. 
Can you perhaps advise, do you have a neighbourhood plan at all, or are you in the process? We are in the process of providing them. Okay. Um, and if I may ask a supplementary, um, Chair, um, how does this, the design of this, is, are, are there other typical um, developments in New Bolts on style that have similar parking arrangements? Well, the, 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 the estate next door was built a few years ago, and that has much better access for parking and um, much better verges, etc. Uh, so it is a lot less cramped and more in keeping with all the developments, whereas this, there is no real green verge space. It's a lot more cramped um, from, from the uh, view above doesn't really show it that well, but the parking is an issue. They just seem to have crammed as many houses as possible in without taking into account um, people getting around the road. Also, the road itself is so narrow that... Uh, you may that, be that, diverging that slightly away from where the question yeah, was. Okay. Okay. Thank you, though. Councillor Fielding. The entrance to the site comes off the burrows and off the main road through the burrows. Is that road wide enough, um, particularly just before you get to the hammerhead that will then become the entrance onto the new site? It looks very cramped. Well, if you... Well, yes, <laughs> is the answer. It is correct. Um, it? And also, the road, main route through is going to be unadopted. So where are all the bins going to go? Well, I understand the county haven't, haven't raised any objections, so we'll have to move on from that point. Uh, Councillor Mills and Councillor Crump. Just, just a quick... Um, was there any consultation with the parish council with the developer on this one? Um, very little is the answer. But, but there was. Um, was we there, was we there... had correspondence. Unfortunately, I'm not at, uh, in a position to say exactly because it's not something I've dealt with up until recently on this particular uh, application, I'm afraid. So, mm. so I'll so go back to my colleagues to. Uh. to, to I, 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 the honest answer would be to say I'm, I'm actually not sure. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. Councillor Crump. Hi, hi Councillor Clayton. Um, just concerned about our, how do the houses compare in character and the street scene compared to houses nearby? They are more cramped together. They, the appearance is more cramped. There's less green space. Um, the visible appearance of the properties is going to be more cramped than anything else in the area. Right, if there are no further questions. Okay, so Councillor Clayton, thank you very much. Um, we go now to Gillian Marsden, please, speaking on behalf of the residents. Welcome. So, you also have three minutes. If you'd remain seated for any questions at the end, and again, I'll give you a warning at the final ten seconds, if that's okay. Over to you. Um, I live in Newbold on Sour in Miles Meadow. Um, Newbold is a rural dark sky village. Um, there's been no communication with the village or the residents in respect of the design or of this application. And I believe actually this is a breach of um, the NPPF. Um, when Bloor Homes originally obtained the planning consent, it was for up to 35 houses and they were relying on the land aged blue, um, which they included in their application as land to be cultivated to link the habitat with the wildlife corridor and to, and to provide green space. This project was dropped before the appeal. The blue area is not actually included in the current planning application. Um, this development is, um, lacks green space um, and further that the wildlife corridor has been totally ignored and not included, which was the condition of the appeal. Newbold is a rural village. Almost all the lanes within the village have green verges and small green areas, especially in the Sandfield Estate. This is an urban style development which will be a poor relation tacked onto the end of the burrows. There's a large quantity of two bedroom houses. The village is actually short of three bedroom to buy or rent, and there is a demand for smaller bungalows for elderly and disabled. Um, the parking design is a disgrace. Putting all these extra parking spaces into private um, properties doesn't help. There's no available parking for visitors, and um, the reality will be cars will be parked all over the place and on the pavements. Um, it will also lead to disputes with the land ownership, even more so with the unadopted drives feeding a number of the houses. 
The Sandfield Estate has insufficient parking at present. Residents and visitors already have to park on the road or even the pavement. Additional traffic through here will not be sustainable, bearing in mind there will be no room for construction workers to park or construction traffic. There is only one way for vehicles and pedestrians to access the village, and that is through the narrow double bends of the burrows, which would endanger pedestrians. Um, I'm concerned about the proposal to maintain the land by John Bradley. Um, it raises the question, what happens when he is incapable or dies, and will it be open to the public to enjoy? Um, I can see the wildflowers being planted just being grazed by deer, and it won't be an enhancement. In conclusion, the planning was given for up to 35 houses. This does not mean 35 houses must be built. New build has already exceeded the core strategy figure. This site does not include the makeup of houses needed and the parking is grossly inadequate. Ten seconds. This urban style development is just so out of character with the rest of the village and it will not blend in with the Sandfield estate and nor does it echo the Mansell Farm estate which is currently under construction. Thank you. Perfect timing. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> any questions please from the committee? No? In that case, thank you very much for your time. Uh, we now go to our ward member, Councillor Saint. Welcome, Councillor Saint. Okay. So you also have five minutes. I think you know the routine from now. So over to you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I think you hit the nail on the head when you announced, or somebody on the top table announced, that the outline application here was granted on appeal. There's been a lot of contention over this site and it's been long resisted by a development on this land has been long resisted because it doesn't sit naturally within the village. It extends it. However, the planning inspectorate has granted the principle of development on this site, so I won't argue against that, although I'm arguing that this scheme should not be approved. Um, one of the main issues is uh, being, being dealt with, but can I argue, or can I remind you, Chairman, because I'm sure you were in that chair when the outline planning permission was refused by the committee, and that is we had an arrangement by which there was an over-intensity of houses on this site, the up to 35, because there was a contrived scheme to include a bit of land down the road as part of the open space requirement. And I see absolutely no reference to that in the officer's report. Nor do I see any reference to the uh, issue of uh, whether or not the estate, the proposed estate, complies with the manual for streets, right, which is our problem to sort out. I've had this discussion with Mr Barker on several occasions. And it effectively, it relies on the uh, facilities to get the refuse vehicles into this site. However, the main problem, so those are deficiencies in my view in the officer's report, which I think at least are worthy of an explanation or even a deferral. But the main problem I find is the announcement from Mr. Wrench, was it 83 car parking spaces he announced? If I've got the number wrong, I apologise. It was a hell of a lot to fit in. Where? Where are these vast numbers of parking spaces going to exist? We're going to rely on cars because there's not much of a bus service in Newbold. Therefore, we have to make certain. I personally think that this scheme should be rejected and the, 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 the um, developer has an opportunity to come back to actually put a bit more space in. I think as Mr Clayton decided to say, the uh, development here is far more intensive than other things around it, in answer to Councillor Crump's question. I can answer Councillor Parry's question about the question of whether or not the developer consulted the parish. I don't have any record of it, and I'm usually engaging with these things. So they've come along this cold and not necessarily taking into account the views. Okay, we've got to have some houses here, but this is far too intensive. Um, we're going to need off-street car parking or even on-street car parking within the development because of the lousy bus services. So therefore, 
the scale of the development, the scale of the proposals is far too great. And on those grounds, I urge you to reject it. Thank you, Councillor Saint. Any questions for the ward member, please? Councillor Barnes. I don't know whether it's a technical question or one for you, Chris, but are the white bits where they're parking or what I'm trying to do, you, you say there's 80 sites, 80. Perhaps I'll Good ask uh, the opposite. Yeah. It was just the, the, the well, the, perhaps the, come, yes, the white parts are the parking areas, yeah, yes, okay. but we can come back and clarify it later. Any other questions? Councillor Saint, thank you very much. Right, let's go to points of clarification. We've had our first one already. Yes, the white areas on the representation in front of you are the, are the allocated parking spaces. Councillor Brain. Yeah, I'd like to know the width of the estate road where vehicles would have to reverse eight, we're told. I assume there's a footpath as well. There's a footpath on either side of the road and I believe the road is a five metre width. Let's see if I can check the road. That's curb to curb, not taken into consideration the footpath then, five metres. That's as far as I know, yeah, that's correct. Thank you. But cars could pass along that road without having to pull in or anything like that. Am I right in saying? Uh, yeah, the width has been accepted so by five metres is enough highways to... and it's also been tracked from uh, refuge lorry and large delivery lorries um, to show that it can go around the site. Um, I have got some tracking. Um, That map to me looks like it's in, it has an additional footpath as well as the road to me, does it not? Uh, which one, sorry? That one. There's if you one zoom on in on the main side. road, it, it has a footpath both sides, and yeah. then the curb to curb is still five metres. Yeah. So there's, a, so there's a, a width of the road on which cars will travel yeah. is five metres, so then there's an additional path That's on correct. both sides. Yeah. That okay. is correct. Uh, yes, Councillor Mills, thank Councillor Crump. Thanks, Mr Chairman. Um, on clarification, is there only one way in and one way out on this I can see at the moment? Uh, what about the construction uh, traffic? Would that be just one way in and one way out? There's no other way in or out? Um, the access uh, as approved for the, uh, for the development, so the future residence, uh, was approved at outline, and that is through the boroughs. Right. Um, there is uh, a current access onto Mill Lane as well, which has been opened up. Um, for some of the ecology work and a part of that. So it's my understanding that potentially that could be used as well if there was any issues. Yes, if you want to continue. Uh, on this question of parking, um, is, it, is it two per, per dwelling? Because we've been told by, by um, Councillor um, Clayton that it was you know, four and three and two. It's at least two per dwelling and there's also uh, additional as well on some so it's a, a minimum of two for every dwelling with with quite several with more than that a minimum of two okay thank you all have two some have more so all have two. okay can i just get a bit sorry eddie if we can come back to the second road you said that could be used for ecology could you just f go back on those comments again i'm not quite following you the previous comments so the question was about the access in terms of the uh, second road, you said. Okay, and would that, that obviously won't remain in the final development? No, that isn't part of, sorry, that isn't part of the final development, no. but it could be part of the construction management plan, so yeah. To could be vehicles. part of or will be part of? Um, I'm, I'm thinking of trying to reduce construction th uh, traffic through the boroughs. Uh, it could be, yeah. Right, okay, maybe that's helpful to our question. Um, I'm going to run through the questions in which they've been, I've seen them. So Councillor Crump, then I'll come down here. Yeah, a couple of things, Eddie, please. Um, page 47, uh, ecology. Uh, there was talk about the wildlife corridor and the site plan reflect the recommendation for budgets, etc. cetera. Um, we've, have we got anything in the conditions about that? Is there anything 
being proposed. Of course, if in terms of ecology, yep. um, all the ecological conditions were originally attached to the outline permission. Um, they've, also, they've all been agreed now with the county ecologist and signed off. Um, so there's, they have uh, not recommended any further ecological conditions. Yeah, so I just wonder why you mentioned enhanced wildlife corridor. Because I thought if it had been agreed in the, out, the original outline one, why does he want it enhanced? Might be me reading it wrongly, but it's just... Councillor Crump, can you clarify that question for me? I'm not sure that I understood it. I don't know about Eddie, but I didn't. Well, I knew what I meant to say. You um, to which page were you looking at? Sorry, I missed that. Page, page 47. Okay. Um, top it says, are we able to score an enhanced wildlife corridor across along the northeast, and can the site plan reflect the recommendation for budgets advised in their survey? So was that agreed in the original outline plan? So, because from what you've told me, it's those conditions still apply. Yep. So if they do apply and those conditions are in there, why do we need to put that part in the report? Uh, that comment has obviously come from county ecology based on the Cotswold Wildlife ecological work that's been done when on site. Um, following further discussions, following these comments in the update sheet, um, the mitigation measures which detailed by the um, applicant's ecologist were satisfactory, um, covered those points, and he was happy with it after that. Does that, does that include the, um, the cor corridor as well? Cause it says about budget mitigation, but didn't actually uh, yeah, the he, did, he was happy that the existing plans and the additional ecological plans that were submitted covered those points. Okay, that's fine. And the so, uh, another point I got relates to the open space. I believe um, the ward member mentioned it was part of the appeal. Sorry, uh, the, the appeal decision. Something about open space and it's not being addressed. Could you just clarify that? Because I wouldn't exactly 100% sure about that. And I, I should have asked Councillor the site about that, really. In respect to the outline, it was previously included that you can just see it on the corner um, of here that there would be um, another contribution of the line within the applicant's ownership. Um, during the appeal, there wasn't any conditions attached to that, and that actually doesn't form part of this application or the outline. Um, so everything on site would be formed by what is shown just within the red line. Right. Um, I've now got Councillor Barnes and Councillor Fielding. Yes, it does appear that the site is being used from another entrance other than the, going through the houses. C can we put a condition that the construction is done through that site? I think we're referring to the mill lane access and we're happy that we can condition that, so that's fine. Well, we'll come I, back to that later. If yeah. at the point maybe it is approved, I would like I agree. to put that. Councillor Fielding. Going back on to what Councillor Barnes was saying, mill lane is very narrow and I would have thought that there, there isn't the width for turning circles, etc. into the site. But my other point is use of public transport. Uh, anybody who wants to use public transport has got a long old walk all the way through the boroughs to it. Is there going to be any form of sort of fi um, pass, um, pedestrian gate off the site to allow people to catch buses if, if there is a bus stop in the near vicinity? Uh, no, the only access for pedestrians will be through the boroughs. Okay. All right. Any other points of clarification, Councillor Brown? I just want to come back on the, um, the parking issue, if I may. Um, 
Could we have the, um, the plan up which shows the... Uh, that's it, yeah. Look in the top right hand. It looks like a shared driveway between two houses. Um, so I wonder if there's sufficient distance between the two driveways for... Yeah. So that, that's a shared driveway between two houses. Yeah. So what's the width of that? And is there room to open a car door if another car's there? <coughs> There's a second part of the question, which I'll ask in a minute. Uh, all the widths of the driveways and parking spaces uh, have been assessed in terms of the standards put forward by County Highways, um, and they were satisfied that they met their minimum requirements for parking sizes. They consider yeah. the off-street off parking? In terms of size, as you can see here, they've been um, mapped out for each individual space. Could you uh, give us a width, though, Eddie? Um, I don't know if I've got the width. And then you, you, the other part of the question is that there was a minimum of two spaces per any dwelling. Does that include the garage? Because we know that on, on occasion garages are used as stores, not um, parking areas. Yeah, so to clarify numbers, there is... Between the 35 dwellings, there's 82 um, allocated spaces um, and 18 additional garage spaces. So all in all, there's technically 100 spaces off the road. Just to put that in put some perspective, in terms of the endorsed standards uh, at Cabinet, uh, the same amount would have been for 75 dwellings and 14 visitor spaces, which would have been 89. Right. Uh, more on that road, right. I'm just if we can work out the precise width of the, yeah. of the parking space. I don't think I have the width, unfortunately. Can, can we measure it off the plan you've got with you? We've had this come up before at a plan application where the two households couldn't open the doors. So I think it's important that we know that. County Highways have agreed it. We're, we're, we're a bit stuck. It does appear that there was 100 places where I thought there was 80. Yeah. Councillor Barnes, you're correct, but we're so still in points of clarification, so I suppose Councillor Brain... Within your rights to ask, of course, it doesn't necessarily form something yeah, we could object to. We're here to question what yes. officers and uh, consultants exactly. have had to say. So we, there would be no point us being in at all. Absolutely fine you asking the question. That's okay. We can just wait for an answer, if possible. Right, we need to get a scale rule. Uh, if we just take a two-minute break, just literally for them to get the right rule so we can measure it, then we can get an answer to your question. Two minutes only, don't go far.
Thank you. Right, okay, we're back, and we've got some answers. So, Eddie, over to you. Thank you, Chair. Sorry for the delay. Um, as shown here, the width of the box from here to here is 2.5 metres by 4.7 metres in depth, and the distance from the actual centre point of the drive to the outside of the drive is 3 metres. And the, and the average width of the car? Average width of the car is about 1.8 metres. So that, just to confirm, it does allow the car doors to open even if everyone's parked there at the same time? Uh, for a normal vehicle, yes. Yeah. Yes, okay. an average vehicle. Okay. Um, can I... Uh, Macy, you've got a question, I think, as we were just mentioning about. Can we deal with that now in points of clarification? Because it's one that's come up, and we were talking about mill lane and access for construction traffic. Am I right? No, maybe I, can cont I think I'm right in saying... Or I'm not, I'm not been told by Mesa. Is it possible that the uh, inspector's decision said that that couldn't be used for any sort of construction traffic or any sort of traffic is, uh, in terms of an access? It's here and I'm not looking for it. Okay. Well, whoever wants to update us on that, because I want to check, because I was about to ask for a condition. So. My question was, and I think Councillor Barnes was sort of supporting me, I was, I was sort of moving along the lines of maybe we could offer constru a construction traffic route through Mill Lane rather than inconveniencing the residents of the boroughs. But it appears it's possible that the inspector who approved the outline application said that that access could not be used. So we just need to con confirm that before we can put any condition about anything else in. All right. So we're just confirming it. Okay, I'm going to ask you to confirm that. Um, right, so on, on that issue of site access, because um, it's something I've raised, and Councillor Fielding, you sort of talked about it, and so did you, Councillor Barnes. I think if we could, my view at this point is, if it could be um, conditioned that site access be from Mill Lane to aid in the construction process to reduce any sort of problem for the uh, residents, I would prefer that. And I think that's definitely the way I'd want to go with it. Um, however, we're not able at this point in time to confirm that. What's com committee's views? Do you share my, my thoughts that actually that's really critical and I would like to see that if it's at all possible? If that is the case, then we would probably have to look at deferring this in order to get proper information on whether or not we could use the mill lane access for construction use only, not for permanent use, but for construction use only. I th I think hang on, hang on. Councillor Brain first. Well, it was me that brought it up. Yeah, I know, but I'm going to go through the order in which people are indicating. If we couldn't do that, we would certainly have to have a strong condition on timings and working hours yeah. uh, coming through that. They would be on that, but yeah. Okay. Right, Councillor Barnes, sorry. Well, I, I think we can just put a note on to ask the, uh, the applicant if he can use Mill Lane or uh, in the construction. I really would prefer to make sure we know this. Chaps, do you feel at this point you can give us a clear answer on that? To be clear, we haven't found anything within the um, original outline permission. There is a condition 18, I believe, for a construction management plan um, for details of that. So as part of that, they could explore the possibility of using Mill Lane 
to access the site for any reason they can't do that, then it would have to be through the boroughs, but there is a condition already attached that we would have to agree conditions of right. the construction management. Councillor Mills. So, uh, Mr. On that point, um, did the inspector say Mill Lane? Sorry, did the inspector say Mill Lane can't be used? Did he say that? We go on. on on the appeal. We can't find anything. I, I wasn't at the hearing, so I don't know why if it was verbally said, but it's certainly not. What well, we can't find it within his decision notice. Well, if we can't find it in there, then we can we can condition it. Am I correct? We could then condition it based on your based on your reading. Uh, yes, yeah, subject to agreement with County Highways, obviously saying that it's safe access. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I'm, con I'm aware of the fact we're still in points of clarification. I know we're diverging slightly. Um, any other points of clarification before we go to a debate? Right. Let's go to debate then. What do we think, Councillor Parry? Then I'll move down here. Well, I've actually got some serious concerns about this particular application, um, as I feel it. There are three part core strategy policies which to me, I have, a bit, I have an issue with. I have an issue with CS9, which is design and distinctiveness, um, because this was highlighted by the local resident and also the ward member in terms of it doesn't fit in with the locality. And I think it falls down on CS9. I think it also falls down on CS19, which is housing mix and type. We've already had identified this evening that um, the mix of dwellings do not reflect local need. Um, and I also feel it falls down on CS15 as well. So I'll be interesting to hear what others, other members say. I've got Councillor Fielding, then Brain, then I'll move on to the side again. I, I agree with Councillor Parry. The, the housing mix, in my view, is, is not um, suitable to really to, to look towards um, bungalows and single units because people are going to want to downsize and I think this is a, an area which can, is suitable for that sort of activity to happen. Also the fact is that the, I think there's too many houses on the site or buildings, properties on the site. You've got uh, the track through the boroughs which is not going to be convenient for the existing residents. So I think the less we c properties we can put on the site um, and more suitable properties for people, the better. Councillor Brain. Yes, Chairman, I tend to agree with my colleagues on, I've made a note, poor layout and design of parking, plus garages brought about by over-intensive building density. Uh, I've never liked tandem parking and having to reverse out onto um, estate roads. Um, and if the garage is not used as a parking area, it makes it even more difficult. Um, so I will go against the officer's recommendation, I'm afraid. Yes, Councillor O'Donnell, sorry. Thank you. Um, I agree with what my um, fellow councillors have said. And also I think it just feels as if they've come along and popped a development in rather than listening to what the locals want and need. It's not the right housing mix for the area. Parking is always a contentious issue. Um, on whatever development, and when you're parking behind each other, it's just going to get worse if someone's slightly out of line. Um, and also, it does concern me there's been no real engagement um, between the developers, because if they had engaged, they'd known what the, what the um, area actually needed, and there's not the correct mix of houses. And it just it seems to me like an overdevelopment, which has been said, and I think, as the ward member suggested, perhaps they should go away, really redesign and come back with a different application. Councillor Mills. Yes, Mr. Chair, I think it's all been said, hasn't it? Um, my beef would be that it's just overdeveloped for the site. Um, that, I think that that's what happened while we turned it down in the first place, uh, before we went to appeal. Um, and, yeah, it's just overdevelopment of the site for me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I'll be, I'll be going on the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Councillor Mills. Councillor Barnes. Yes, I think the last speaker was just about correct. He's over with too many big houses, not much parking. If it was 35 houses, and we, we have to have 35 houses, but if they were a different mix, it would be, I think, more appropriate. So I'm quite happy to propose refusal um, on over 
intensification of the site. Thank you, Councillor Brain. I'll take this for a second. Okay, well, we've got it proposed and seconded. Uh, we're going to need to flesh these reasons for refusal out a bit. I think uh, Dale's been taking notes as we go along. Councillor Parry, I know you've given us CS9 design style, not fitting. CS15 is yeah. the distribution of the development because it's so Correct. crowded. And you said CS19. And I also and felt type. CS19 because it's the housing mix and type, which contributes to overdevelopment of the site. Okay. Would you care to comment on the strength of those as well as reasons for refusal on this application? Bear in mind, it's just a point for noting. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, perhaps I can start with the... with. CS15. Um, Councillor Parry said that she felt that it was contrary to CS15 because it was cramped, if I understood her correctly. Um, CS15 is talking about distribution of development within the district and numbers within the district, not within a particular site. So I would suggest that CS15 is probably the wrong direction to go if you're concerned about the cramped nature. Councillor Parry also mentioned CS9 which is about design, and if you consider that the site is excessively cramped, then I would suggest that it's probably a poor design, and therefore CS9 is the right place to be looking if it's crampedness that you're concerned about. Uh, housing mix, CS19, yes. Uh, if you look on page 50, you'll see that uh, about two-thirds of the way down, we go through the housing mix, and we explain that the uh, two-bedroom houses on site comes in at 35%, which is bang on the uh, mix that the core strategy is looking for. Uh, Three-bedroom properties come in at 35, which is low, and four-bedroom properties come in at 31, which is high. So there is a disparity there between the threes and the fours. Um, we previously reported to members that as the housing mix is a target for the, the district as a whole, uh, it, we can't expect developers to hit the numbers bang on for every site, and there does have to be an element of flexibility from site to site. Um, and in allowing that flexibility, we are expecting the mix to be achieved over the plan period. Uh, so that, that still has to be our advice. In the past, we have said the variances in threes and fours on this site are close enough to the mix in the core strategy to, in our opinion, deliver the mix over the plan period. It's not precisely correct. Um, it does amount to a reason for refusal if that's what members wish to do. I would suggest it is a very weak reason for refusal because of the long plan period and the large number of sites that you have to uh, consider when looking at mix. Um, I think that's covered all the points, Chair. Did I miss anything? No, I'm happy with it. Can yes, Councillor Crump. You know, I agree. I wouldn't any point to me agreeing with everything it's asked, but I'll talk a bit more about, first of all, about the mix. Is it not in keeping with the neighbourhood plan? Because we mentioned, um, I think, the Paris Council actually mentioned about, or well, the Paris Council mentioned there was no one bedroom properties, and I believe there was, I think, in the neighbourhood plan, they were talking about bungalows as well. And I know the um, Paris Council um, neighbourhood plan has got limited weight because it hasn't been uh, gone down the right steps and gone to a referendum yet. But there's no account of local need regarding the mix. Regarding CS15 and the appearance and the design, we could potentially use that for, because it says, isn't it, the design of formula houses would reflect the context of the locality, ensuring a continuity of key design features that would establish the identity of the place. And from what the neighbourhood plan, uh, sorry, what the parish councillor and the ward member said it was not in keeping with the locality. So, I felt that part of CS15 could apply there. Yeah, Dale says, would you, can you refer to exactly where you're talking about? 
or, or Council Power, whoever's got it. Yeah, page 49, policy CF 15 requires the design of the development to be well related to and can be readily integrated with existing form of the settlement. Okay. Yeah. It was, sorry, Chair. Um, it, was, it was the reason why I mentioned CS 15, because under the requirements, it talks about, on page 84 of the core strategy, the scale of the development is appropriate to its immediate surroundings and to the overall size and character of the settlement, and the design of the development is well related to and can be readily integrated with the existing form of the settlement. I felt the design and its distinctiveness went against this policy, which is in CS 15, which is why I mentioned it. In, in the first part of the debate. So we'll perhaps include that. Councillor O'Donnell. Um, and what about AS10? Because it, it's not in keeping with the houses around it, and therefore it's not minimising the impact on the character of the local landscape. On page 192, the core strategy. Oh, no. Go on, Dale. Um, this is another education, Chair, where I think I need to ask uh, Councillor O'Donnell to clarify her thoughts. Um, simply because it's different, does that mean it's not minimising the impact? And in which case, why isn't it minimising the impact? Uh, if, if I understood you correctly, your, your concern was that this development is different to the surrounding development. So, and it's not meeting the, the local needs, so it's not in keeping with that local community. Okay. Does that clarify it or not? Please, because I wasn't writing when you were speaking. <laughs> I can't Please repeat that. Yes. But... <laughs> so I was saying it's, it's it was out not, of keeping. It's not in keeping with the street scene. It's out of character, and yeah. it's it's not in keeping with the local character or meeting the needs of the local community. I think we've had enough reasons, and I think, officers, you, okay. you've heard our reasoning. You, it yeah, may not be as strong as you like, but I think we'll leave it. Is that a separate No, I, think, I, don't, I don't think, and I'll just take lead from the committee if that's okay. Is parking part of your concern in terms of the poor design? Yes. It could be, but... I just want to make sure we're just clarifying. So nine numbers to... In terms of numbers or in terms of the design uh, tandem style? It's only design. Shh, shh, okay, come on, one person at a time, please. Design Thank you. Layout. Design, okay. poor design layout, and, it, and we would like a... Guys, please, one at a time, sorry. And we would like a reference to the, the, the parking and the, way, the nature of the parking, I think, in terms of our uh, dissatisfaction with this one. Okay? So yeah. that's definitely part of it. I can, nods okay. That's fine. Dale. Chair, I think I've got it. Okay. Leave it with me. Thank you. Right. Thank God. Okay. Um, it's been proposed and seconded. Um, I suggest we go to the vote, if you're all happy with that. All those um, voting to reject or in respect of the reasons that we've had mentioned in great detail now, please show. Thank you. Therefore, the, the committee resolves uh, to refuse application reference 17 slash 014 Two nine slash REM. It's getting late. Um, our final application then is on is item eight and on page seventy one. Um, Eddie, if you'd like to whip through this pretty quickly for me, this is application reference seventeen slash zero two six six eight. Could I ask members of the public to give us just a little bit of quiet so we can get this finished? Thank you. Slash F U L, and this is for five New Bold Road, Wellsbourne. Over to you. Thank you, Chair. Um, the site is within the centre of Wellsbourne, as shown here by the black dots. Uh, the application site is outlined in red, as shown here. Uh, black, sorry. Uh, the application site, uh, from an aerial view, is shown here with a front green garden. Uh, this is a view south uh, along the road, uh, showing the neighbouring property to the right. Um, the application site is the short uh, close boarded fence shown here on the right with the neighbouring property uh, and this is uh, going north with the application site shown on the left with the close boarded fence 
there are no updates, Chairman. The recommendation is to grant. Thank you. Just very quickly confirm the reason this is here at committee. The application is only going to committee because it is uh, a member of or relation to a member of the council. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. Um, I'm happy to propose this one, I think, and we can skip beyond everything else. There are no speakers. Is anyone seconding? Councillor Crump. Um, if you're all happy with that, all those in favour, please show. Thank you very much. The committee therefore resolves to grant application 17 slash 02668 slash FUL. This concludes business for the night. Thank you.